Hi everyone and welcome to this introduction to our Shiatsu Summer School. I've got my colleague Dinah with me here. Um, please say hi on the chat. Oh, I haven't said hi myself. I better say hi immediately here just to show you that I am actually on the chat as well. <laughs> there we go. Good. Um, yeah, so we've got uh, just an hour really just to present to you what we've got in store over the next um, eight weeks. We've set up what we think is a really interesting um, set of webinars. We're going to feature quite a lot of the New Energy Work team. We think it's about time that you found out more about us. Um, and we've got some of our favourite presenters all lined up as well, just to get us through the summer. So thank you for um, attending today. And what we're going to do is we're going to take you on a quick tour. We're going to find out quite a lot about you as well, because we want to find out how much you know and how confident you are with in a lot of these with a lot of these different areas that presenters are going to be um, sharing with us. So I've got plenty of polls. We're going to keep you on your toes. Um, and uh, um, so without further ado, let's get the slides up. Here we go. So there we have some lovely graphic that Kat found that we're using for this summer school. We've called it Connections um, because that's the theme that's going to go all the way through the whole the whole thing. So let's see what we've got in store. We've got, I'm going to just basically show you how it works. You're probably familiar with that. We're going to go through each of the presenters, lots of polls, find out about, about you. Um, and then we're going to just mention how you can access the recordings. So pretty straightforward, really. And Dan's going to keep an eye on the chat for me and uh, we'll find out. So how, let's launch the first poll. Let's find out um, whether you are a Shiatsu student, practitioner, teacher, and other therapist, or other. <laughs> um, I'm going to share that poll with you now. Let's just have a quick look and see how we're distributed today. Okay, probably not a surprise that most of you are Shiatsu practitioners. We've got quite a lot of teachers though, 13% of you. That's pretty amazing. So hopefully you'll re you should really enjoy this, what we've got in store for you. Okay, any more people want to vote? And we'll just see quite a lot of students as well. So hang on in over the summer and uh, see how you get on. Right, I've got a second poll for you now. I just want to find out what your relationship is with New Energy Work. Are you a supporting member who's basically supporting us every month as a supporter, patron, benefactor? Maybe you're someone who's just donated one off every now and then, or you maybe just a free member for now, or maybe you've not even joined the free membership and you're just watching the webinars. Just what wanted to ask you that just to find out where you're at with your relationship with new energy work. Here we go, the third, our uh, second poll coming up. So let's just see. Ah, look at that. Well, that's quite a surprise actually. There's quite a lot of you who haven't actually even joined the free membership yet. So I recommend you get over to new energy work and start the account. You'll have access to all our past um, events, all the recordings and tons and tons of online content there like to do that and thank you very much for look at that nearly a quarter of you are supporting members and we love you because they help us pay the bills every month um, and those of you who donate we again say a massive thank you for you as you probably know we've been running everything free of access free to access ever since the beginning of covid so we really rely rely on you okay nearly found out everything about you let's just find out where this is a fun thing let's find out where you are um let's see whether you're in the UK, Europe, the Americas, Asia, or other. I don't know if we get anyone from Australia, maybe. Wow, look at this, Dinah. We've got a majority of people from Europe. There we go, fantastic. Of course, we, we still think the UK is in Europe. We don't care about Brexit here. <laughs> but just <laughs> fantastic. Okay, excellent, thank you very much. And quite a lot of people from America as well tuning in. That's really great, thank you very much. Right, so this is how it works. We've got eight webinars for you. Um, we've got, like I say, most of the team are presenting and we've got um, some of our favorite guests. Um, what will happen is every week, um, you will automatically get sent a link to the recording, the whole recording. And uh, Kat will also be archiving all the recordings and adding extra content to the online course, uh, which is on uh, newenergywork.com. So those of you who are still not signed up for your free membership, you'll be able to access that um, if, you, if you would like to. Okay, so look what we've got in store. We've got eight webinars. This is the introduction. We're here right now. And we've got Nick and Margo. We had so much fun with them on ISCO last year. They were one of the favorite presenters 
um, on uh, International Shiatsu Congress online. Um, great favorite of ours and we wanted to get them back. The theme is connection, so they're going to be working, um, working with clean language. Then we've got our very own Shakura Meddings um, setting up the key field. More about that later. We've got another favorite of ours, Alice Wielden, coming in to do a session on Seiki. And then we've got Kat Westwood, who is actually now famous at New Energy Work for actually creating the most popular course that we've ever had online on webinar courses. She had, I think, seven, over 750 people sign up and she actually broke all the records. And when you think about all the international teachers that we've had on this uh, channel, she's done really well there. So we had to get her back. So we're going to do a session with her. And then our very own Basti, Sebastian Deans, is going to do something on the Tau, um, which he's really into. So I'm looking, really looking forward to that session. And towards the end, we've got Cindy Engel, who's um, a pretty high powered researcher, and more about her later. Um, and she's done some webinars for us in the past with really, really fascinating scientific ideas about how information can be passed um, through in Shiatsu and energy work. And then to finish off, on the 31st of August, at the end of the summer, I'm going to put together um, a demo treatment and hopefully we'll be able to work all in the same room then with a small team so I'll be able to use different camera angles and I'll take, uh, take you through a whole session. So that's the plan, really looking forward to that. Um, right, so now let's get on with each of the presenters. So um, what I'd like to do is ask you, how is your clean language? What is your knowledge of clean language? Are you an expert? Good level, a beginner, or not so good. Maybe you tried it, but you don't really work for you, or you don't know anything and it's new to you. So I'm just going to run that poll and we'll see how is your clean language. And we'll see if we can get Nick and Marco on to the show while you're asking that. Um, okay, I'm going to invite Nick onto the stage. And I'm going to invite Marco on to see if they're hanging out anywhere. Maybe you should take me off the stage. Uh, yes, I could do that. Let's have a look. I'm just going to invite them on, just see if they're hanging around. Oh, here we go. There we go. Just going to take Diana off the stage here. And look, here they are. Marco's there. Look at that. OK, <laughs> so let's have a look at this poll. No one claims to be an expert. We just have. <laughs> but we've got 19% a good level, 30% a beginner's level, 13% tried it but having issues, and 30 a whacking 39% they know nothing. It's just completely new to them. So there we are, Marco. That's what that's your audience. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna embarrass Nick and Margo now by just running another slide before we talk to them. Okay, so the theme of their um presentation is um, clean language and Taoian movement. Um, I'm just going to, oh, we haven't got a video feed, but it doesn't matter. Uh, yes, and basically they're going to work with mindful embodied inquiry. This is all from their, uh, from their copy they sent me. Um, and it's really to get some insights into that connection. And certainly I must say, as Nick knows very well, Margot, I found clean language completely transformed the way that I interacted with my clients. And when I first started applying it in my work, it just opened up a completely new space, um, you know, for my work. And one of the most remarkable things was that clients that I'd been seeing for decades, suddenly, I suddenly could explore a completely new area, a somatic area with them. And it was just really quite amazing. So. It's great to be have to have you back to do another webinar. Thank you so much, Cliff. Can you can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. Yeah, Nick. I don't know whether we haven't got video feed from him. I don't know if we can got. Um... Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Nick. Yeah. I, 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 it says my camera is on. I don't know why it's not coming through. No, don't worry about it. We'll just we'll just have to make do with just your voice. <laughs> oh. In fact, what I can do is I can put the slides back on, and then we can at least <laughs> then people can actually see what you look like. There you go. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. So, would you like to say a few words about about what you're what you're going to be presenting in the, in this uh, in this webinar, part of our summer school series? 
Um, more than a few words. We want to do a five-minute taster, if that's okay. Oh, my goodness, really? Okay, well, that's a surprise. Yeah, okay, All sure. Right. Right. Okay, so here we go. That, yes, so ours yeah. is called Language is Key. If there's any way to get my camera working, please do. But anyway, um, so, yeah, we're looking at, at you know, language is, is not just a way of exchanging information. It's also a resonance. And when we, when we think of it like that, we're engaging both sides of the brain and we'll be looking at how a few simple clean language questions can help us connect mind and body um and you know the basically we're using language in every shiatsu session we do so why not learn to use it in a way that amplifies the key connection mm -hmm. yeah so next week we're going to be uh actually doing a daoyin practice daoyin is a therapeutic movement from the old days in china um, and we're working with that to emphasize how sound is the basic building block of language. And we'll also be comparing Western polyvagal theory with Chinese medicine, particularly the three Dan Tian. Oh, great. And, yeah. That's and one of my seeing... favorite things. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll, hopefully we'll, we'll have yeah, an experience is. of how language affects our physiology. Fantastic. Yeah, I must say I did a whole when I got into polyvagal theory, it was just so interesting to map it against um, Chinese medicine. It's it's almost like they, they knew they knew. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Very cool. Absolutely. I think they did know. <laughs> um, yeah. So if you're up for a very quick taster, obviously, we only yeah, got five minutes. So um, we just wanted to use a couple of sounds from Margot's Dalian practice and ask a couple of clean questions and see what happens for you. So if you'd like just to sort of take a moment, get yourself comfortable. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're sitting in a chair or on the ground or even lying down, that's fine too. We'll be, we'll be lying down next week. Uh, but for now, just kind of getting grounded, feeling your feet or your lower legs on the floor or your seat in your chair feeling the weight and pressure of your hands wherever they're resting and tuning into the fact that you're breathing. Just coming to land here and now. And we invite you to place a hand on your belly. If that works for you, just to rest it over your belly button. <clears throat> And again, tuning into your breathing, we invite you as you exhale to make the sound ah, A-H. Ah. ah. However you make it is just right. And we'll do that two more times. So breathing in. Ah. 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 And just staying with that ah and the resonance of that ah. And asking yourself, is there anything else about ah? Or well, that sound or that space or that part of you that you're connected with right now, what is it like there? Just noticing if any response comes. And then we move on. Mm -hmm. So we invite you next to place your hand on your forehead. And again, tuning into the fact that you're breathing This time with the exhalation, making the sound OM, O-M. Again, however you do it. OM. OM. Maybe you can feel that vibrating in your head. OM. OM.
And one more time. Oh. Oh. And as that, that resonance fades, just keeping your hand on your head if you like, or letting it go if you want to, just staying with what that sense of OM is like. And again, asking yourself, what kind of OM is that OM for you? And leaving space for an answer to come. Not trying to find an answer, just leaving a space for an answer to come. What kind of OM? Is that home? Then you can let your hand come to rest wherever you like and check in with yourself which one of those two resonated most for you. If you could choose one, which one would you choose? And maybe you can put your hand back yeah. to that place. Just coming back to whichever for me, it's this one. Uh, whichever resonated most for you, maybe both. Just choose, choose one. Come back to it. Tune into it. Don't just ask, is there anything else about that place, that resonance? What's it like there? when you spend a little time there now, just kind of saying hello. Maybe I get a word or an image or, or maybe nothing, maybe just an invitation to stay with it, just noticing what happens. Mm. <laughs> And allowing your attention to expand to the rest of your body, welcoming yourself back to the space inside all of you and the space between us. And we hope you got something out of that little journey. Um, so next week, we're going to continue tuning in with this embodied presence through movement and exploring languages of vibration um, and a way of touching energy through through the way we talk to each other, talk with each other and ourselves. Yeah, and and we'll be looking at one more element uh, on the next Tuesday, which is probably the best bit. Um, silence. What are the different kinds of silence you know that we encounter in our uh, you know shiatsu sessions with clients? And for me, Clean language is, you know, that some people say you shouldn't have language in shiatsu, but for me, clean language is a way to get to silence. That's what it really is, and all the resources that you find there. So I really would hope you can join us next week. Definitely. I have to say, Nick, that that was one of the things that really, it re I really noticed about when I started, you know, you taught me all those clean language things and I started using my practice. There was a hell of a lot of silence, and you have to kind of get used to that because... Mm -hmm. What happens, the great thing about clean language is it really does encourage people to somatically connect, doesn't it? So you, you'll say something, you know, like, what is that like? Or something really simple. And then they will just go like this. And they you know, do oh, And it's just that quality of that silence that's just so powerful, I think. It's, um, it's a processing somatic connection sort of thing. Yeah, you can see both sides of the brain starting to work. Right? Yeah, people absolutely. Their eyes yeah. Down and so on. Well, all I can say is, what a surprise. You just drop in out of nowhere. Margot's in America, Nick's in London, and they spring a demo on me without, you know. <laughs> it's a delight to see both of you. It's going to be great. And I'm really looking forward to next week. What a great way to start the whole series. Thank you so much. Thanks, Cliff. Thank you, Cliff. Thanks, Thanks Cliff. everybody. So let's get back the slides back up, and we'll just uh, clear it. Get the clip to off. There we go. There we go. Fantastic. Okay. So how about that? What a start. Okay. So now what about setting up your key field? Now what that means, it's, um, that what that means is basically the quality that you feel when you go into your shiatsu in terms of your connection with the universe, how that energy field is set up. And we've got a particular expert on that. 
um, Shakura Meddings, who's part of our team. And she spent uh, quite a few years traveling the world, studying uh, Qigong. And so I just want to go and just going to ask you this poll, first of all, let's just get a feel for how you are, how you're confident in setting up the key field. Are you super confident? You walk in, you set up the key field, pretty confident, not confident, or you're not sure what that even means. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, run that poll. So setting up the key field, how are you doing? Oh, look at that. We've got some people who are super confident. We like that. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, most of you seem pretty confident, although you're not, some of you are not sure what it means. And that mean that, that, all I can say is just make sure you get along on the, on the next session that we're doing, which is Shakura's session. And just a little bit about her. She's actually a Shatsu practitioner here. She's very, very busy with clients and she does all kinds of other stuff in your energy work as well in between times. And she studied with uh, Master Lui for three years all over the world, China, America, Hawaii, I think it was. Um, and she's, uh, and if you're one of our Wednesday um, class participants and you happen to be on the class the other day, she actually led the class uh, on a Wednesday and she actually went through some of those things that she does. But basically, it's basically the science and the art of setting up your own key field, connecting, creating the space in a really powerful way so that when you do touch your clients, um, that everything is kind of in place and it's all connected up. Very, very powerful work. Can't wait, can't wait to, to invite Shakur in to do that. So now we have next, we have um, a question about Seiki. Okay, so the question is um, practicing Seiki. Now, there may be some of you who just do Seiki. I know there are a few of you out there. Um, we will, we'll find out in a minute how many there are. So some of you may have been seduced into the Seiki world from Shiatsu and you've given up doing Shiatsu altogether. Um, some of you might be mixing it with your Shiatsu in different ways. Maybe you've learned it, but you don't use it, or perhaps you know nothing about Seiki. So let's run that poll and see what, um, <laughs> where you're at with your Seiki. Let's hear that, let's hear it. Whoa, okay, look at that. We've got, um, we've got a majority of people who know nothing about Seiki. That is a surprise. Let's just see if we can get Alice on here. I'm gonna request that she puts a camera on and puts her mic on. And I'm gonna put a slide up while, she, while we get her sorted out. And here she is, Alice Wilden. She's one of our um, graduates from Shatsu College and she's I think one of the best Seiki teachers that I've ever experienced um, in as much as uh, she really does really understand it and can and I'm going to embarrass her now <laughs> really that um, really can explain it as well as um, actually uh, practicing it which is quite rare I found um, so hi Alice can you hear can you hear us Oh, we can't hear you. Let's have a look. Let's put your microphone, let's request your microphone again. I'm gonna request the microphone, see if we can get her on. Um, yeah, while she's sorting us, her contact. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can, hey. Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. So, how are you doing, Alice? I am doing well, thank you. Thank, thank you for fitting us in. I know you've got a really busy day today. Just <laughs> nice to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, it's great to see you too. I'm really looking forward to the session. I mean, maybe you could just say a little bit of background about how you got into Seiki and why you why why you love it so much. So why I got into Seiki? Oh well, I, I'll keep it brief because I could give a very long answer for that. But um, I got into Seiki because I kept hearing about this guy Kishi, who seemed to be so um, exciting and dangerous. And this was back in the late nineties. Mm -hmm. And then I, I just, things happened so that I met him and he gave me a, a session and I thought, this is it. This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And from then on, I was um, committed to doing, to learning Seiki. I don't, I couldn't have told you what it was, but there was, there were, I just knew I had to do this. There was something, and you're talking about connections and Nick mentioned resonance. Mm -hmm. Um 
And it was something about, it was that. It was the quality of connection and resonance that yeah. was yeah. just the thing that I wanted and, and was looking for. There we go. Yeah, brilliant. And I have to say, one thing I found consistently doing when I've been doing tutorials and things like that all over the world, I've done tutorials with people, with, with people who have studied Seiki and studied it, I can almost always tell there's something special about the touch. There's something about that connection there. It's difficult to describe, but there's definitely a depth of quality in the touch that I think is you know, really, really valuable. Whether you do Seiki as a single you know, um, modality or whether you build it into your shiatsu. So there we are. Yes, I see we've got two people who say they just do Seiki. I'm very curious who these people are. It's <laughs> all right, yeah, only yeah, 3%. And look at that, we've got 50% know nothing. It's all new to them. So I really recommend that you come along to um, Alice's session because you, you know, yes. I think you find it really, really interesting. So here we go. I'll put the slides back up. There you are. Um, and of course, you did a long-term collaboration with Kishi and you wrote, helped write that wonderful book, um, which is, which apart from anything else, is a massive it's such an interesting, massive insight into the whole world of um, Masnaga school and everything. I just, it was just as a historical document, I think it's so valuable. Well, yeah, well, I don't know if you want me to comment on that, but uh, yeah, uh, Kishi was best, very well placed to, to um, talk about that because he was Masnaga's, so one of his top students and his demonstrator for yeah. many, many years. He was very close to Masanaga. Yeah, that's it, yeah, yeah. Brilliant, well, we're really looking forward to, really looking forward to seeing you on your on your webinar and really recommend it, I can't, you know, can't wait. I'm already really looking forward to those Tuesday, Tuesday evenings all through the summer. Thanks ever so much for finding time to pop in, Alice. It's great to see you. Lovely to and, see you. Uh, yeah, we'll see you on your webinar. Bye-bye. Okay, great. That's Alice Wilden. Brilliant. It'd be lovely to see her on the webinar. I really recommend that. Okay, so we've got another poll coming up for you. Let's see what we've got next. We've got poll seven. Okay, Meridian Yoga. It must be about cat session, mustn't it? I can see it coming up. But let's find out where you're at with your Meridian Yoga, okay? Maybe you use Meridian Yoga for yourself and for your clients, or maybe you just use it for your clients and don't do it yourself or you know about it, but you don't really use it, or you don't know nothing about, we don't know anything about Meridian Yoga and it might be new to you. So let's find that poll. Um, we'll find out where you're at with your Meridian Yoga. I guess there must be quite a few people who know quite a lot about it because we had such a massive, a massive uh, turnout for Kat's Meridian Yoga course earlier in this, in this year. So let's see what we've got. Ooh, look at this, and Kat's got, a really good audience. You're going to have a really audience, really good audience here because again, we've got quite a lot of you have know nothing about it. So that's forty percent, and I would really recommend it. We, um, if you want to check out uh, Cat's Meridian Yoga course, it's now archived and it's sitting there on New Energy Work, free to access. Um, we did five webinars together. I worked with her. It was a great pleasure to work with her. I learned so much. Um, and in this particular webinar that we're going to be doing. Um, with Kat, um, it's going to be focused on connecting the uh, Hara diagnosis with Meridian Yoga. So it's going to go a little bit further than her basic five-week course that she did live on these webinars earlier in the year. Um, so we're going to work together and we're going to do some case history work, uh, get re right into it, because personally I find using Meridian Yoga as one of the most powerful uh, recommendations that I give to my clients. Um, having said that, it's really important that you practice it yourself. Um, and I noticed that most of you who are doing that are practicing yourself. That's twenty-seven percent of you are practicing it yourself. So it's really useful that you have your own personal experience about that. So just a word about Kat. She came up from Brighton to Norwich a few years ago, and she made herself pretty indispensable pretty pretty quickly here um, <laughs> because um, she's. A fantastically hard work, a very dedicated person, and of course she got landed with hundreds of jobs, which she's doing for us, including video editing, filming, and all kinds of things. And now she's building lots of this um, course uh, structure on the website as well. So she's a yoga teacher trainer. She's actually running her own yoga teacher training course up here in Norwich. Um, 
And we're going to be doing, as I said before, we're going to theme this on linking the Hara diagnosis with Meridian Yoga. So that's another kind of connection, isn't it, between Meridian Yoga and the Hara. And also, I'll tell you something about Kat. If you're not one, one of our Wednesday class participants, you probably are unaware that Kat is a fantastic cook. And she's been producing these amazing videos. Every 10 weeks, we do a different element on the Wednesday class, um, which is on Wednesday at 10 o'clock uh, UK time. And uh, each we're doing the whole Meridian cycle all the way through the year. And we've, uh, we're have we getting into the earth element now. So in a few weeks, we're going to have another cat's kitchen, which is videoed from her kitchen. And she does the whole recipe thing. It's just so funny. It's just like um, a TV show. And the funniest thing of all is she's now so famous in this area that she gets stopped in the street by people going, your cat from cat's kitchen. <laughs> it's really, really funny. Uh, to see. So she's a bit of a celebrity now in Norwich, uh, Kat Westwood. Really looking forward to that. Now, I wonder if she's around. Let's just see if I can get her on. On. I'm just going to see if she's actually around. Let's have a look, see if she's actually here. Let's go invite her on the stage. Let's see if she's actually around and she can say a little bit about Meridian Yoga. Oh, here we are. Let's see if we can get a video feed. I am around. Chris. You are around. There we are. You see, I'm just talking about you. And then... I know. I was listening. Slightly embarrassed, but thank you yeah. very much. <laughs> yeah. right, it's all facts, Kat. You have broken all records with your with your Meridian Yoga course. The figures are there. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm so glad because I know really Meridian Yoga, maybe it's not really a, a thing, but I love the fact that Masinaga's Meridians and yoga practice can come together because they're actually really similar and uh, it's amazing what you can do with the body yeah exactly yeah. yeah that's brilliant i really enjoyed doing them myself i mean i've been doing yoga i've actually got back into my yoga practice as you know since the beginning of covid and so it was great to do all of that scarabelli stuff with you and it did actually change my yoga practice quite a bit actually I, Oh, like more internally with the breath and yeah. not stretching out too much and things like that. You know, being more I'm working with Vanda Scarabelli, which is a lady. I mean, she's she's dead now, but she's um a, she was an amazing practitioner and worked with Iyengar. And basically, she worked on undoing the doing. So for me, when I see a lot of yoga and it's like, yeah, we're in it for stretching. We're <laughs> we're in it for a workout. I'm like, mm, no, that that one's not for me. No, <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. Much, much more internal, and sometimes even the smallest movement has a powerful effect on the body. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and I think also when you're giving recommendations, it's really important that you can actually do it yourself, and you can actually demonstrate it, isn't it, to the, to yeah. the clients and everything. That's yes, really important. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm really looking forward to doing that, um, uh, doing that, when, that, doing that, that uh, webinar with you as part of our summer school series. Thank you very much, Kat. You're welcome. I'll right. see you guys later. Okay. Bye. Okay. Cool. So what have we got next? Let's have a quick look. So that was a lovely cat, and there must be another poll for you. Oh, here we go. Poll number eight. Your knowledge of the Tao. How is your knowledge of the Tao? This is interesting because back in the mists of time when I was doing my shiatsu training in the early 80s, the whole Taoism vibe and everything was really strong. But I know that some of the more modern practitioners, maybe if you're only practicing for, say, 10 years or something, it's not such a strong part of the shiatsu study. So let's find out the facts. Let's find out how is your knowledge of the Tao? Have you studied it in depth and practiced it or studied it a little? Or you're not sure, kind of neutral in the middle, or you know nothing about Tao, about the Tao, which I think might be pretty surprising. But let's find out. You know nothing. <laughs> okay. There we are. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. Although we have got 35% of you are either not sure or know nothing about Tao, the Tao, which is kind of surprising because the Tao is the foundation of yin and yang and it's basically the foundation of chinese medicine and who better um to there's no one better to lead us into the world of the tao in practice than our very own basti deans and the reason for that is because basti deans is known in the new energy work team for being the most chilled out kind of guy who basically flows with everything whatever's happening and quite a lot is happening for him right now, as I can tell you. Um, he always flows with everything, and he's kind of like embodiment of that. 
And if you've ever seen him on the Wednesday class or on any other webinars, you'll, you'll know what I mean. So there's going to be very much an emphasis on practicing the Tao. So there'll be lots of practical exercises. And, obvious, and I think actually all Shiatsu practitioners should have a foundation in the basic principles of Taoism because it's rooted in the whole um, yin and yang thing. So I don't think Basti can, oh no, maybe he is here. Let's just have a look and see whether he's over here. I know he's right in the middle of lots of stuff at the moment, um, but he may be available to say a few words. Let's just see, see if we can get him on, on the screen. Let's just see if I can, uh, <laughs> let's see if I can get his camera on. And he's out in the wild of North Norfolk, so he might have a bit of a problem with the connection there. Let's just see. Oh, here he is, trying to connect. There you go, Basti Dean. Hello. Hi, cool. Yeah, so Basti, what, what made you choose that subject of the Tao out of all the things you could have chosen for the summer school? <laughs> um, well, funnily enough, um, when I was very young, uh, uh, I found a book in my mum and dad's bedroom and it just looked exquisitely beautiful. Very mm -hmm. simple photographs in the book. Yeah. And the writing inside was also very simple and kind of beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and it was called the Tao Te Ching. And that is the seminal text on Taoism written by Lao Tzu. And yeah. so since about 12 years old, it kind of fascinated me. Fantastic. And I didn't really That's know what it was, but it yeah. just seemed beautiful. And it touched a part of me when I was having a difficult time. And so ever since then, it's naturally been what I've turned back to. Ah, Cliff has now jumped out with his camera, but he'll get him back soon, I'm sure. Yeah, we just here we go. Yeah, oh, well, it's okay. very, very early, a very, very early experience then. Yeah, so I, I, and I had no idea what I was picking up when I picked it up. It was just a beautiful looking book. Fantastic. Um, and I still, I still have a copy, which is the same. Uh, it's a very old copy, yeah. and the pictures are by a lady called Jane English. So I'll, I'll bring it along for the session, so right. so you can see some of the pieces. But yeah, we'll be doing some fun, uh, some fun things. Um, Great, keeping it practical. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, Basti, thanks so much for dropping in. I know you're terribly busy at the moment. You're right in the middle of a move, and you're right in the middle of North Norfolk. And no wonder we're having trouble with the. Um, connection there but we got him on i couldn't believe it there we yeah. are Plastic yep. beans. looking forward to it see you soon okay so there he is our very own basti deans really looking forward to that it's going to be it's going to be so great to give the team members a bit of space to really share their enthusiasms for their most you know for the things that are most dear to them i'm sure it's going to be a great um um a great event in that way for us to be able to it's going to showcase some of the members of the team who work extremely hard all through the year um, to make new energy work possible um, for you guys out there. So, you know, so there we are, Basti Deans. So let's have a look and see what the next poll is and where that might lead us. <clears throat> OK, now what about somatic empathy? OK, so let's see. What's your knowledge of somatic empathy? Are you an expert? Good at it. OK, neutral, not sure. Poor, you know, you're not really that good at knowing anything about some empathy, or you know nothing again. So let me find that <laughs> that poll, and um, I'm going to share that with you and see how we get on. Okay, let's have a look at these results. Another whole whole twenty eight percent of you claim to know nothing about somatic empathy. Wow, that's amazing. That we can definitely put that right, can't we, Cindy? Yes. Can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you loud and clear. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So that's here you excellent. are, Cindy. I'm, in fact, I'm going to show you the slide that I prepared earlier, just so that everyone can show that I've done my uh, prep. <laughs> there we are. So here we have Cindy Engel. A great, as I put in the copy, a great ally for um, the Shiatsu world, really. I really, really mean that because, you, Cindy, you're such a, um, you've got such a depth of knowledge. You're such a consistent researcher. And it's just so amazing to have that kind of depth of knowledge behind 
what we do, which is trying to figure out what the hell is going on. (laughs) We do shiatsu. (laughs) Well, I think that's the uh, that's the point that that the place that I'm coming from is not that um, science knows best uh, because it certainly doesn't, but just to to fit the experimental to our experiential and just see where they where they're uh, supporting each other and where the gaps are and there's you know science always lags behind so um, our experience is is sort of light years ahead of what experiment can confirm but right. it's it's ever changing so it's really nice to catch up with um you know what <laughs> what is it okay to talk to scientists about <laughs> Right, yeah. That's it. And yeah. what's the language that they use? Yes, you know. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, have so to I was going to be asking uh, questions such as, you know, does does information pass? Do you do you what conceptual model do you have about the connection with yes. your clients? Do you think that information passes from them to you? Right. Uh, and how do you think you get that information? You know, and just work around those those ideas and then put in what uh, experimental studies are showing just as to, to help guide our conceptual models. Yes. But ending up really with the fact that having a conceptual model such as HARA and the HARA diagnosis is so important to structure the information that we're getting. Yes. That's exactly my experience. I, I think that's that's absolutely true. It is a model that structures experience, isn't it? It's it's yeah. a way of organising whatever's going on. And I have to say that your work has really made me think a, a lot about what's really going on um, when that communication um, happens, you know, and what's really happening. It's made yes, me exactly. much more reflective about the process, and it's really changed a lot about. It's the, the interesting thing, Cindy, is it hasn't really changed much about what I actually do. No. You, you know what I mean? Yes. But certainly the understanding and this, and it's the, it's the possibility of finding out a way that you, you can actually kind of understand that's a real thing that's happening and it's not some kind of weird, you know. Exactly. Subjective thing, weird kind of, you know. Yeah, I think that's the most important sort of uh, take home point from, you know, bringing the science in is just to say, you know, this is not just imagination. It's not um, anything weird or spooky. People do get freaked out by uh, knowing things before they should know them and so on and so forth. But, um, you know, it's nice to be able to put that in a in a framework. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Great. I'm really looking forward to to having a web to, to attending a webinar myself and I'm sure it's gonna be I'm gonna, lots of so I was just gonna say it will it will link back to the clean language work won't it yes absolutely yeah in fact all of these themes mm. really do link together don't they I mean certainly the clean language is it's clean language in a way I, I think actually just kind of clears the space for that somatic empathy information yeah. to to occur you know in a really mm. clear space you know yeah brilliant Okay, great. Thanks so much for Can't wait. taking some time out of your evening to be with us. It's great Thanks. to see you and really looking forward to I'll see to you that. in August. Yeah, okay, brilliant. So there we are. That's Cindy, Cindy Engel. If you haven't seen her book, by the way, called Wild Health, it's a best selling book about animals self medicating. Um, it's best selling in the category of animal self medication, anyway, right, Cindy? Um, and uh, uh, it's a fascinating, absolutely fascinating book. It, makes, it really makes you think about how we know what's good for us. It certainly did me when I when I read it. And uh, I just love working with Cindy because she is just so direct. She's so well um, grounded in what she's doing, but she's also an extremely advanced energy work practitioner. She does Qigong and she does work with extremely advanced energy work techniques. And she has absolutely no problem just telling us that science is light years behind what we're doing which is kind of reassuring when science is the dominant paradigm of knowledge in the world at the moment <laughs> okay so here we go let's see how we're doing we're doing really well it's like 50, uh, we've got 15 minutes left and we've we're right on time um so i guess the next thing is just for me to ask you whether you've ever seen one of our observed treatment sessions and they're one of the new things that we brought in just before the coronavirus, in fact, we we um, 
we only did a few before all the masks and the lockdown and everything happened. Um, but let's find out whether you've experienced one. And they're the ones where I was working in here on a real client and I was being videoed mainly by Kat. She did a lot of the editing as well. Have you seen one of those observed treatment sessions? I'm going to uh, run the poll right now. Let's just find out. Just find out where you're at with that. Okay, great. So most of you have, like around two thirds of you have seen one, but if you haven't seen one, again, they are available free of access now during the pandemic um, and possibly forever. We'll have to see how many donations we get and whether we can still keep the show on the road. Um, <laughs> um, but basically, yeah, what we did is we decided, well, one of the things I really um, valued about my training was I spent some months living in Pauline Sasaki's house and I actually served a full-time apprenticeship with her, which basically mean, went working very, very hard. I got up really early, I cleaned the whole space. She was doing eight clients a day at the time, most days of the week, um, and, and she was teaching in the evenings. And I watched hundreds of treatments and I would just literally sit there. She would get me to do a hard diagnosis before and after each session. And I would watch her do hundreds and hundreds of treatments. And I and that was a kind of experience that obviously was a big life changer for me. And it's something that I realized that perhaps is not really uh, something that can happen so much um, to everyone. You maybe go to Shatsu school, you might see your teachers do a few treatments, you might do some clinics, but really to see hundreds and hundreds of treatments by someone who's very experienced is quite a rare thing. So what we thought we'd try and do is we use the internet, which is such a great medium for that, in order to just really give you the experience of what it's like working on uh, clients, real clients, and this is the interesting thing. We actually got, I actually got volunteers from my actual clients in here, um, and I would actually do the session and try and keep it as tight and as close to a, the real experience of a session um, as I could. And what I did was I narrated through them so you can get an insight into what I'm actually doing when I'm working. And they proved to be very popular. So I thought we would go one step up in the, <laughs> in the, um, uh, summer school, I thought we'd try and do, because I never I never dared do an actual live one before. I always recorded it first. They were pretty much uncut, but we it gave us a chance to edit out any bits. But I thought just for this summer school, we'd try a completely live one. Um, so I'm going to hopefully, with coronavirus restrictions, we'll have to see. If it's not possible, I'll pre-record it. Um, but what I'd prefer to do is do it live um, if we're allowed to have people in the room uh, doing the videoing. Uh, because I need someone to do the camera so you get camera angles and everything. So we'll see. Either it'll be fully live or it'll be videotaped and I'll do some live commentary as we watch it. Um, but it will be a real time treatment. And basically what I'll be doing as well is just a challenge I've set myself for this is to try and demonstrate some of the things that I've actually learned from all these amazing um, teachers that we've got on the summer school. Because I've learned personally a lot from all of those people. Um, and I'd like to just uh, see if I can demonstrate it as I do a treatment. So I'm going to be bringing in all kinds of things like clean language, um, setting up the key field, yin and yang. Um, who knows, may even come up with some brilliant yoga stretches to recommend to the client. Bring in some of the things I've learned from Alice in terms of the resonance and connections and also setting up that space for the somatic resonance to occur. So I'm going to use it as a way of rounding off the whole the whole summer school there. Okay, cool. So let's see what we got next. I think that's pretty much it, isn't it? Now let's just see. Um, yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about the recording. So you can see this is on draft to get that and you can see who's been doing the work. Look who's actually credited with the Shiatsu summer school connections. It's the very lovely Cat Westwood, our, our cat who saw earlier who managed to pop in and talk to us about Meridian Yoga. Um, and she can see she's been hard at work setting up the online resource and that's where you'll be able to go back you'll be able to check into all of the recordings and knowing cat she does like to put extra bonus um resources on there so what we'll do is we'll have links to all of the presenters so that you can get to their work um and if you want to check up and maybe follow on studying with any of the individual presenters and it also means you can go back revisit the all of the videos and check in with any bonus content, downloads, articles, 
or anything that Kat can find that she thinks um, might be interested, interesting for you. Okay, wow, look at this. This is a, a very, very, uh, yeah, Diana says, do you need a receiver for that? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, we had uh, we had a lot of fun with the with the um, uh, observed treatment sessions, and clients were so generous that they that they allowed those real sessions to be videoed. Um, and Kat was renowned for being it's all that Meridian Yoga. She was renowned for being able to uh, go around like like this with a steady cam um, when she was doing it. <laughs> okay, so that's what we're going to what uh, Kat's going to be putting together. I've right, kind of landed her in it. I'm like Kat, yeah, I've landed her in it right now. <laughs> Put up the ex expectations really high. Okay, good. So let's just see. I don't think we've got any questions. I think it's all been pretty much um, self-explanatory, really. And all I've got now, really to say now is just like a few thank yous. Like, first of all, is how is all this possible? How can we run this amazing internet resource? And we have now got well over 2,500 members. And that's a lot. <laughs> um, and uh, one of the reasons why I've done that is because we've opened up all of our content free since the beginning of COVID. But the disadvantage for us is that every one of those new members increases our platform costs. So our costs go up every month. Um, and also, thank you, a massive thank you to the 20% of people who donate or are regular supporting members. You have kept us going since the beginning of COVID. But only 20% of those 2,500 members actually contribute to us. And that may be because they're in terrible um terrible position financially i know some people are really suffering and that's absolutely fine um and that's one of the reasons we did it to support those of you who really really need to help um but if you do want us to keep going and i can tell you it has been very close we've had a few months uh, earlier this year where we didn't we only just made it through the month and if you don't want the whole thing to go and shut down which could happen any month then please uh, think about donating even a small amount or um, some or become what we really like is supporting members because that gets helps us every month to survive and that's what we're doing we're surviving month by month which is probably what you are doing too um, in this situation so just a massive thank you to all of those people a real heartfelt thanks to everyone who's donated so far um, we've really enjoyed being able to share and to get so many amazing presenters in so many amazing events over the last 18 months um, with ISCO Italia, ISCO 2020 and all of the courses that we've been able to put on, all those live webinars, we've really, really enjoyed it. Um, all the COVID support we did early on, we did um, 26 webinars in the first month of COVID in six different languages. We managed to really help a lot of people um, and that was a really quite a, an amazing experience for us all. Okay, so here we go. So that's us, I think, done. We can round up now. And um, all I've got to say now is we will see you next week for Nick and Marco's session. I'm sure you're really looking forward to that as much as, as much as I am. And all I need to do now is just say thank you in the chat. I'm going to put a nice clap in the chat. And <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put a clap in the chat and a nice heart to everyone. It's great to see you all. Thank you for turning up. And also thanks for all the presenters that managed to find some time in their evening. Some of them were literally, like Alice, I know was squeezing it between appointments. And Margo was in America. I mean, how about that? And they all managed to drop in and um, share some of their passion with us. Um, and uh, all I can say now is just really looking forward to the next eight weeks. Okay, goodbye and see you next Tuesday. Tell all your friends. I'm going to end the session.